stand some of those. Oh. oh, hello there. It's me, Lauren Ash, coming at you from the front lines of the hottest event of the year. That's right, it's San Diego Comic Con 2020. And let me tell you something, it's crazy out here. <laughs> And I said to him, hey man, I'm pretty sure I can handle the self-checkout on my own. Ever heard of um, a little show called Superstore? <laughs> Stop it. This is a great crowd. Oh, hi. Sorry, I didn't see you there. Um, my favorite thing about San Diego Comic-Con would probably be making fans' dreams come true. How? By getting to meet me. <laughs> Come in! Excuse me. Delivery. It's always so nice to meet the fans. Who do I make it out to again? Just get my phone back, please. Okay, let's do this. Superstore, Comic Con, year two. Sunscreen, pass, pack, right. Hey, what's up, guys? So. I know I can't be in San Diego uh, this year, but I figure I'm gonna just do it myself. I got my graphic tee, I got my lanyard, I got my uh, nachos that I was able to make here at the house. And just for the real experience, after I made these, I flushed 20 bucks down the toilet. So it's gonna be just like Comic-Con. Got my sunscreen, Comic-Con badge, my meals, and I am first in line for Hall H. I know, I can't believe it either. I guess there are some upsides to going virtual, right? virtual this year doesn't mean that I have to let this baby go to waste. Who needs fancy VIP Comic-Con parties that they won't let you into when you've got a closet and glow sticks? <laughs> ah, good to be back in Hall H. Who's next? Uh, how about the rubber unicorn in the front? Who needs to go to Comic-Con when you have it right here? Oh! That's my dog. Let's go, Pikachu. See you in cyberspace. Are you trying to cut in line? Absolutely not. Get to the end. The American Superstore. One stop shopping for everything you could ever want or need. Anybody checked in with Colton? Yeah, where is Colton? Oh, yeah. Lauren, you still haven't heard from Colton? I have not. I Wait, think I... he forgot. <laughs> okay, he's messaging me. We're recording this, right? What See it? this? <laughs> I said, are you, are you coming to this? He said, to what? I said, the Comic-Con panel. Oh, it was supposed to start at 11. God. I have 3 p.m. I have 3 p.m. Can we do the sarcastic applause to... thing when he comes in? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Nothing's changed. I love it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Superstore SDCC 2020 virtual panel. The cast of Superstore is here. We're still waiting on Colton. You got the time wrong, but we thought we'd just dive right in for you and get things started. I'm going to go around. I'm going to introduce everybody, remind you of their character name, and then I'd like everyone to just tell us currently what emotion they're feeling if described by a color. So first of all, of course, we have Mr. Ben Feldman, who is, oh, wait, uh, here we oh, go. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, 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 let me uh, figure out my audio. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, here. Uh, uh, uh. Colton, I want to know what you were doing as you got the text that you were supposed to be doing. This. I was cooking bacon. <laughs> You're cooking bacon. Okay. <laughs> FYI, we've also all been asked to make sure our Zoom names are our own names. So I don't know who Leon Buttersmuggers is, but I, I yeah. do want to change that. Yeah. Is that, is that a part you're hoping for? In a uh, one second. Uh, I gotta, I'll be right back. <laughs> Uh, we, of course, have the young, handsome Mr. Ben Feldman, who plays Jonah. Ben, what's your current emotion if described by a color? Hey, guys, mauve. 
mauve. For the rest <laughs> of the world, he means mauve. 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 <laughs> yeah, how it's pronounced, really. Yes, it is. All I right, moving on. That. We have <laughs> Mark McKinney, who plays Glenn. Mark, describe your current emotional state as a color. Oh, uh, mustard yellow. Beautiful. Next, we have Nico Santos, who, of course, plays the young Mateo. N- Nico, what's your emotion as a color? Uh, I, w- I would say like a sunshine yellow for happiness and a seething red. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the character is closer to the actor than we think. Okay, oh, of the lines have- are blurred. <laughs> we, of course, have the lovely young Nicole Bloom, who plays Cheyenne. Nicole, your current emotional state as a color. Mine is a bit of a sorbet. I've got some pink. Did you just say it was a sorbet? Yeah, it's a sorbet. I like that. Sorbet. <laughs> nice. We have Kaliko Kawaii, who of course plays the lovely Sandra. Kaliko, your current emotional state is a color. Say burnt sienna. Okay. Oh. And sure. finally, the man of the one. hour, Leon Buttersmugger. <laughs> <laughs> who well, well, <laughs> plays Garrett. What's your current emotional state as described uh, by a uh, color? Uh, is a swirl. Uh, does that count? Swirly? <laughs> Absolutely. Beautiful. And as always, I, of course, am Lauren Ash. I play Dina. And my current emotional state as described by a color would be bubblegum pink because I am just so excited to be with all of my favorite people here, which is great. So thank you all to the San Diego Comic-Con fans who are watching us right now. We're sorry we're not in person. Last year, we were in person. Does anyone want to share any kind of highlights from the 2019 San Diego Comic-Con that they experienced? I mean, we had a lot of things to hit on. We, of course, had the Cloud9 installation at the Hard Rock, which they changed the lobby into a a Cloud9 type area. Of course, we had our panel there was all the press that we're do- we were doing does anyone have anything that sticks out to them as being a kind of a fun memory i think my favorite thing was walking the floor with ben in our masks do you remember that ben no and, uh, i had this really cool mask from the movie the mask and ben had like the worst mask <laughs> i've ever seen <laughs> it was the flash it was, it was, the flash. Fl- <laughs> it was a, an ill-fitting flash mask <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like if the flash ran into a fire which I'm shocked hasn't happened to him yet. I do have to say that my own favorite moment from that panel was everyone was going, they were going down the the, lit, the, the, the aisle saying like, what's your, what's the show you nerd out about the most? And so many people were going Barry. And it's like, I don't know if that's what these people are, we're at Comic-Con. So of course it gets to me and I just sing the theme song to Supernatural and the eruption in that crowd. I've never yeah. felt more alive. She's probably sung that song with lots of people because she goes to like thousands of supernatural. Oh, that's right. Uh, I've been to one. You've been to one. I don't know if you guys remember, but there was a giant who right as yes. stepped off the bus. Yes, I remember yes. that. And I remember that. And I was half asleep all the way through the ride. <laughs> and then I woke up and everyone was like, Nicole, watch out for the, the poo. And, and Keep it clean, it. San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> I also like that that's, 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 Nicole, that's what Nicole take, took Nicole. away most from Comic-Con. <laughs> yeah. So listen, everybody, it's five seasons. This is half a decade that we've spent doing this show. Oh, is, no. Isn't that crazy? Does anyone have like a highlight from the series thus far. You know, for me, it would be finally getting to meet Dina's dad, which was like such a cool moment. It was, you know, Dean Norris, who was so amazing. He was such a, an amazing guest star, such a great actor. That was a really cool moment for me because we we learned about Dina's backstory from an improv that I had in a scene with Nico. And then five seasons later, we finally got to meet him. So that was really like a personal, like cool moment for me. Dean Norris. Yeah, Dean Norris. And the, and the, the Dina's dad storyline was, was really fun. Mark, what's something that, that's a highlight for you over the past five years? Oh, uh, well, uh, it was uh, 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 meeting Mike White, who dropped by one day. That's uh, the highlight from doing the entire series of Superstore. That's it. That's <laughs> that's it. it. Okay. Sure. A huge admirer. Right. Huh. I'm not <laughs> good right. enough. <laughs> I just thought maybe something that we did on the show. Everybody watching this is now Googling Mike White. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Coleco, how about you? I mean, you, Sandra's obviously had such such a huge journey over these five seasons. Is there a highlight for you, a moment? I actually really enjoy all the times that we've all been together and, and banded together against something, whether it be a tornado or, you know, if we're getting together to just to figure out health care, like th- those are my favorite moments for us. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I got a question. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold up. 
So if I'm platinum select, does that mean that I get the stuff in the Gryffindor tier? No, no. If you want things in the Gryffindor tier, you need to upgrade either to the platinum ultra or the platinum blue. Okay. I have a question. Who gave you the right to play God? All I said was the fun can't pay for a live-in nurse. That doesn't mean I want to let Jerry die. Right, you're just not willing to lift a finger to help him. Understood. Loud and clear. Thanks, Jonah. OK, look, I get it up to Diamond Plus, but when you get down to Wall of Fire, it's like, what? Guys, we're making it too difficult. We just got to simplify. Cover everything, exclude no one, and make it affordable. Jack, uh, why didn't we think of that? OK, OK. So okay. It seems to me the problem is that some of us are going to use the fund more than others, but no one wants to put in more money than they're going to take out. Yes, exactly. Thank so you. So my suggestion would be, what if we restrict the fund to those of us who are able to complete a series of Ninja Warrior type physical challenges. See, I was yeah. really yeah. Was oh, OK, OK, how about if you can jump on a table, then you're in? No, we're no, not doing no. that. Works for me. There's no way you can jump on a table. I can absolutely jump on a table. No one needs to jump on a table. I think this guy needs to jump on a table. Yeah. Yep, Isaac, if you can do it, I will totally sleep with Marcus. Wait, what? Isaac. Isaac. Guys, no, Isaac. No, it doesn't mean anything, Isaac. Isaac. Yeah, break room scenes, um, you know, like doing the all nighter episode of season one. That was like, um, especially because it was like, um, you know, a callback or it was written because of the way we shot the pilot and how how crazy we were getting. And to sort of see that and film it as an episode was like super fun. And um, yeah, I really, I really love filming that episode. And I also enjoyed the Blizzard episode, which was kind of a throwback to the All Nighter episode. And I thought what was funny about that was in All Nighter, it was like a bonding thing for the employees. And then in the season five version, the Blizzard version, it was everybody was just over everybody else. <laughs> Everyone was annoyed by everybody. Um, Nicole, what about you? Is there a, is there a highlight other than maybe something poo related uh, over the yeah. past five years you could think of? Yeah. Um I was. Were you there when I met Mike White? (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't there for that, unfortunately. But I always think of all the amazing guest stars that we've had throughout the years. Obviously, Linda, who played Myrtle. But one of my favorites was probably the, um, I think it was season four when I went to the Cloud Nine Academy with Amy and Ian McGarry was our guest star that week. And he played like an angry um cloud nine managing trainer so sorry my gardener's like doing all the gardening right now um but yeah so i thought he was hilarious that was brag. A for me getting to act with him i love that i love that how about you ben what's a highlight for you i was gonna say guest starts too because we've had a lot of really good ones but um i mean if i'm really thinking back over the years i the things i remember most and things that stick with me the most are the different um the food you know i remember the first time we all got dumplings um, in the morning. And uh, mm. I really, I like, I like the candy trucks that we get. I really like the sushi burritos that we did uh, mm-hmm. uh, this past season. That was like- uh, Food. Yeah, those are, yeah, those I mean, are the, I really. I, I want to amend mine because Lauren took two because she said the blizzard. Uh, <laughs> I have, I have two that might rival Mike White. I don't know. One is directing, directing you guys, which was. That one managed of to edge out Mike things. White, huh? <laughs> no, I'm not sure. I, I didn't have time to, to calibrate this. Of and course. then the other one was uh, the cast trip to New Orleans. Oh, that's the only cast trip you've made, Mark. That's the yeah. only one. I'm Yeah. It's very special yeah. for those of us who yeah. are there. Some mm-hmm. people that dropped so out a little fun. suspiciously late. Lauren. Oh, I was going I through a lot that week. <laughs> <laughs> Let's it's not cool. go there. It's Yikes. Cool. Uh, Colton, what about you? What are some highlights? You know what? For me, a highlight every year is the Halloween episode. Basically, we usually go into a fitting uh, and you get to see all the boards on the wall. So you get an idea of what other people are going to be dressed as. And then when you finally get there on the day, you get to see everybody's outfits. Uh, and so I always look forward to that, seeing which uh, characters they decide. Uh, yes, Ben, you have something you'd like to say? <laughs> I would. Just as another cast member here who's who has directed before, I just thought it was oh, funny. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> funny. One of the things Colton mentioned was starting with the fitting, because as a director, 
when you look at the boards before the episode starts to decide which costumes work, all the cast shows up to do their fittings except for Colton. It's just his shirts on like a dummy in a chair. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs> Hey, it's coming out. Oh, hold on a second. I, I, I'm very easy to fit. Look, guys, I, you know, I, right. The rest that's of why, that's why the department crazy. loves me, man. I got no hair, so hair, makeup, I got do. <laughs> uh, I got, uh, I, you know, I wear the same pair of pants and same type of shirt and same type of shoes every episode, so nothing right. to try on. Well, whereas the rest of us wearing such a varied and different. <laughs> Nico's dipped. <laughs> I, I, yeah, and my fittings <laughs> take some time. Yeah. Mateo, have I have three plaid. ties. Yeah. <laughs> I just have one plaid shirt that they dye different colors each week. I don't get a fitting. I just show up, and then it's in the it's in my room. It's like, ah, oh, here we are again, old friend. <laughs> the costume that felt hilarious the first time I put it on, and now. By the end of that week, I'm like, get this thing off me. Now it's really not hilarious. Does anyone have anything else they want to throw in before I move on? Does anyone want to change their answer? Anyway, have the Mike White type answers? <laughs> well, here's the thing about the, the Mike White thing was one of those moments because, uh, uh, you know, well, come on, you've worked in Canada with me. We don't have, there's not, there's not a lot of glamour. This is a day that friends of mine, old friends of mine were visiting and our producers brought Mike White and Ben Stiller. And they were like, oh, this happens every day. That's what wow, Ben Stiller came to our set. I wasn't there. Yeah. Wow. yeah none of us met Ben Stiller. Yeah. Wow. I well, know. I guess we got to this season. We know you got to work with Mark if you want to meet the reals, <laughs> the real famous. It's my, it's my great, great pleasure, pleasure to welcome you to Cloud Nine. Thank you, Glenn. That was beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Hey, listen, let's cut that ribbon and check it out. But first, the comedic stylings of Mr. Howie Mandel. Oh, uh, uh, no, this uh, event was set up by my uh, appearance agent, not my uh, performance agent. Performing is a whole different negotiation. So, uh, thank you, everybody. Then I, get, I guess I'll keep talking. Our social media team put a question out on our NBC Superstore channels about a week or so ago asking for questions. This was very oh. mysterious at the time, but we have some of those questions today. So we're gonna oh, answer cool. some of them. Um, anyone can chime in, but I have, you know, I have allotted a, a question a person because that's that's how I go. And, and the, the lines between Lauren and Dina are blurring by the second. <laughs> so Ben, for you, this is a question coming from at Spider-Man FFH. And it's, if Superstore could cross over with any other show on air or off, what would you choose? I'd probably have to go with Hawaii Five-0 or, <laughs> or Lost. Any so, so we could shoot in Hawaii? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree with this answer. Yeah. I would have to say Law & Order Paris. <laughs> um, you know, line order Copenhagen, something like that. Like, I mean, like, we're, like modern, modern family every other week was shooting in like a different, like they were like, oh, this week the cast goes to Munich. Like, it's so insane that it's like huge deal. I don't think they went to Munich, but I think it's, it's like a huge deal if we cross Barham Boulevard and shoot. <laughs> the good place, the good At the place. New York Shot Film Academy. Yeah, the good, the good place went to Paris and, and yeah. a bunch of other places. Listen, and I actually been, went to I Paris been... and managed to make it look like a, a back lot. Yeah. <laughs> I've been pitching that we have a, a staff training in like Fiji or Hawaii or something like like team building, a team building weekend. I've been pitching that for five years, guys. Or <laughs> they're going to make us live on the stages, I think, at this point. Yeah, we're not going anywhere ever again, which is which is great to think about. Which is mm -hmm. great to think about. Anyone else have any thoughts, any shows, any real answers for a show you'd like to cross over with? For me, maybe Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Mm -hmm. I feel like we could live in the same universe. Maybe some of the, you know, we take a trip to New York City for some reason and get in trouble with the fuzz. Uh, I'd like to cross over with The Expanse. Has anybody seen the show <laughs> The Expanse? No. <laughs> Crossover <laughs> with Dan. It takes place in the future on the outer uh, solar system. No. I think it would be dope. Did anybody see that show, The Jinx? Yeah. Oh, sure. The, the documentary. The documentary yeah. about the murderer? <laughs> 
Easy crossover. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Nicole, here's one for you. Yeah. This is from at Simosas. And the question is, what songs would be on your character's go-to playlist? She's a huge Kesha girl. I mm, believe yeah. that, you know, her childhood was probably a lot of Selena Gomez, maybe yeah. some Britney mixed in there. Um, yeah, a lot of Kesha. She loves Fetty Wap. We've, we've said that before in one of the of episodes. Course. So she's really Megan the Megan Thee Stallion? What? Savage? Megan Thee Stallion? Oh, Savage? Oh, yeah, you know Got she's it. all about Megan Thee Stallion <laughs> for show. <laughs> Yeah, she loves all the hits, all the bangers. Coleco, what about Sandra? Have you had any thoughts about what would be on Sandra's playlist? I think it would just be covers of the song Creep. Maybe in different languages. From from MySpace or YouTube. Just collect it oh over time. And on, play it on a loop. Yeah. Yeah. I like the idea of like a really dark, like it's just like death metal or something. It's just, yeah. Her iTunes is just books on tape. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's, audio it's books. Death metal, but people screaming like simple instructions. Don't forget to shut the door. Don't forget to shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah. I once said in a in one of these lives that we did that I thought that Jonah's favorite movie would be an inconvenient truth. Like that of, of all time. I mean, it's it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's his that favorite movie of all time. Like that just seems like such a Jonah so answer. So many Jonah. It's one of those movies that whenever he sees it on TV, he's got to stop and watch. Yeah. <laughs> and he gets fired up again. What about anybody else? Does anyone else have an idea about what their character's favorite movie would be? I feel like with Sandra, it would be like Three Men and a Little Lady. Like it'd be like a <laughs> sequel to a classic or something. I feel like Mateus would be like Titanic. It's Love triggering that. for him, but <laughs> it's also healing. Yeah. We have to face our pain. Yeah. What, Mark, what about Glenn? What do you think his favorite movie would be? Something biblical? Uh, well, it might be the Ten Commandments or Ben Hur, but it also might be like an hour long 15 movie on how to repair an engine in a Jeep from like the <laughs> 60s. <laughs> you are going to need several different tools. You will need a Roberts screwdriver, a wrench adjustable, or three fifths, three eighths, or one quarter. Colton, the, the, the account at I Stand Samosa asks. Okay. What are you most looking forward to in season six? Oh man, what am I most looking forward to in season six? Uh, just Paid. starting, <laughs> starting to work, Paid. Uh, Paid. Uh, leaving, 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 leaving my house and <laughs> going somewhere else to do something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, I'm just super excited about season six. You know, so much obviously has happened in the world and our show has always been a show that you know kind of you know reflects what's going on in the world it really shows what's going on with you know uh you know uh, people who work in uh you know retail and the types of jobs that the characters on the show work at and i think those stories are so even more so important to tell right now because those are the people who you know they didn't go home they didn't shelter in place they had to keep going to work they had to keep stocking toilet paper and water and everything that people needed over this time so i'm excited to just to go back and you know make create some more stories uh so that those people when they do go home can sit down and watch a show and laugh uh and have some fun uh with uh some relatable content i love that great answer i i completely agree um coleco here's one uh this is from barbara kramer on facebook and barbara asks what's everyone's favorite area of the store to fake work at i thought this was an interesting one <laughs> yeah, that is a, yeah, a good one this right? past season was the first time ever that I'd been at checkouts. I'd never oh. in five years been there. And I was mm. like so blown away that like everything worked. And like the whatever the total I would say and the script, they had somehow figured it out that like when I scan it, the total would be on the screen, even if no one saw it. I was just amazed by the detail. Also, no blocking, just standing there while people <laughs> come and go is always nice as an actor. Um, but yeah, that's my new favorite. I love that. That's so fun. I've, what about other, like, because I know Colton, you're obviously often behind the customer service desk. Yeah. So I feel like you don't you see a lot of other, uh, you know, areas in the store necessarily. You know, you'd think that, right? But actually Garrett gets around, man. He's all <laughs> over the store. Uh <laughs> What's a favorite then? What's a favorite area yeah. for you? Uh, my favorite area is actually sort of the uh, like the tech the electronics area where the TVs are and all that kind of stuff, just because like for, for, so, for whatever reason of all the places of the store, that's where I really feel like I, we're just in a store. Uh, yeah. It's got like the little kiosk with all the cell phones and laptops and all the screens on the wall uh, playing ads. And uh, yeah, I just I just love being in that area of the store. 
Love it. Yeah, that's that's my favorite too. Like housewares and electronics, that side of the store. Um, because it, exactly, like it feels like a real store when you're there. Um, I also just love the products in those sections. So my favorite thing is to sort of like <laughs> browse to see what we've gotten new from our product placement people and then uh, ask to see if they have any extras. So I, can... <laughs> is there, I still is have there gotten nothing. I want to remind you, I have gotten nothing. <laughs> Everyone else has gotten something. I have gotten, I got a mug. I got a Christmas mug. Oh man, I got a swag tron. I don't want to talk Hoverboard. about it. Stop it. <laughs> ben, what about you? What's your favorite area of the store to fake work in? I, I mean, I, I like electronics and I like uh, the cafe, I think both for the same reason. And that is that they're the only places where I get to sit down for scenes, mm -hmm. I think. Um, I was, my answer was going to be the break room, <laughs> but only when I'm allowed to sit. Right, right. <laughs> okay, I guess the break room, but those are you long days. All right, mind. we got a couple more questions, real quick. We're gonna we're gonna take at least one more. Uh, this one is from at Cab Loves Cats. Is there a lot of improv on the show? If so, which improv line is a favorite? Mark, you improvise a lot on the show. Is there a, is there a favorite improvise line that you can think of? Probably the, the first one. Probably you and I going at each other during the pilot at the end of the meeting over <laughs> me using a prayer book. To shut yeah. it because it was i mean there's been so many there's been some yeah some fantastic ones I, I think maybe the improvs we did when i was trying to pretend to be your dad before uh, dean norris showed up that was uh, funny too was good. but the first you know you never forget your first one that was Aww. fun because i went out because i had to leave i exited at the end of that scene and we done a couple to script and then and you know i went out you know it's a new show i didn't know how how, how it was going and you know they were there hearing the words that they'd written. And then we improv a couple of times and I went out and they were they were laughing and I thought, yes, okay. Mark, do you remember any of the songs that you've improv? You've improv a oh, lot. Yeah. Probably uh, there was one, uh, the finger of the devil is poking through the foam, which was like really, <laughs> which actually I hear gets asked about a lot. I like improv singing. I could do some now. Do it. Oh, I'm looking at all my friends on the screen. We're having such a great Zoom meeting. <laughs> There's people in Venice and LA, but I just want to turn to you and say, I'm in Toronto. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Very good. Oh. Yeah. True joy. Come on. Yeah. Uh, I'd just like to proud. update everybody that my beautiful wife went ahead and finished cooking my bacon for oh. me. Oh, okay. Mrs. Okay. Buggerworth or Butterworth, whatever the name is. Butter Smuggers, please. Butter Excuse smuggers. me. I'm so sorry, Mr. Butter Smuggers. I apologize for that. <laughs> At Luzi underscore EE, -E, if you had to pick another character besides yours, who would you like to play most? Coleco, what do you think? I'd say Marcus. In a cast of ridiculous people, Marcus somehow is just a little bit crazier and more ridiculous. And uh, he, that character and Don Barinholtz makes me laugh so hard, no matter what he's doing. So that's my choice. I love that. Nicole, what about you? Uh, I would do Carol, but uh, <laughs> mm. Carol, yeah. those crazy mood swings. She's, she's multifaceted. I love her. And that's Irene a, White does a great job, obviously. That's a great, great answer. I love yeah. that. Leon Buttersmuggers? Uh, Brett. Because <laughs> he doesn't is, have any lines. He doesn't have any lines. He doesn't have to do nothing. Just stand there and look at stuff, man. I, I love to do that. <laughs> I love it, Nico. What about you? Um, I was actually have to say either uh, Sandra or Cheyenne. Ooh. Oh, okay. I, you know, I, I think those are the two um, uh, personalities that that Mateo just really gravitates towards. But. Um, yeah, I would I would love a chance to play this character. I like that. And and this is my announcement. I am going to be playing those characters. Season what? six. Oh no! Hi <laughs> guys. Oh, yeah. mm, sorry, <laughs> ladies. This is how you found out. <laughs> yep. Superstore starring Nico Santos. <laughs> Nico Santos <laughs> and Nico <laughs> Santos. <laughs> oh my god. The wig budget alone is going to be. Gonna be <laughs> We're gonna be eating through things. Uh, <laughs> ben, what about you? If you could play any other character. Marcus was my first thought. Uh, also yeah. just because of the jumpsuit um, and because he's a scumbag. Uh, I wanted to, I like the idea of Brett uh, because of just how, how little I, I guess I'd have to memorize or do. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, but then, you know, for me, I'm fortunate because my dream is actually gonna be, be come realized. Uh, I, and this is being announced here at uh, San Diego Comic-Con, will be playing uh, Amy 
this coming this coming season. Starring right, Ben Annie. Feldman and Ben, ben Feldman. Feldman and Ben <laughs> Feldman. Yeah. You know what? Consideration. I yeah. love it. Well, well listen, we got to round up. Nothing new with Ben making out with himself, so. <laughs> <laughs> kind of get, Mark, I want you to weigh in before we move on. Mark, who, if you could play any other character on the show, who would you choose? Uh, well, there's two. One I could probably pay, play, and one I think I'd have a hard time, but I just like the energy so much. So the one I could probably play would be Myrtle. The one I'd like to play is Bo. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Both, both is pretty good. Both you know, my good. and I think for me it's it's always been Cheyenne, really. If I could choose to play another character. I love the Cheyenne character. I think it's yeah. very fun. So good. Season five, we finished it. Do we remember what happened? Take a second now as I talk and try and think back. Obviously, there was a lot that happened. There was a, a huge finale that wasn't initially supposed to be the finale. There's a lot of change that was kind of alluded to in that episode. Does anyone have any any thoughts or or feelings on reflection about season five? Moments that stood out to you, things that made you happy, things that made you sad, any behind the scenes moments? It's wild to think about that last week of filming for me oh because I remember at the time being like, yeah. what's the problem? Like, let's just finish this. And now I'm like, I can't believe we shot so long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, that was an, that was an interest. I try and think back on season five and I only can think about like that last week and a half or so yeah. the news moved like at the beginning of our, our, what was going to be our second last episode, like before we started, it was like, uh, this thing's pretty bad. Oh, well let's go ahead and keep shooting because we're untouchable and nothing's going to happen. Blah, blah, blah. And by like the Wednesday of that week, it was like, what are we still doing here? This is embarrassing. My friends are making fun of me. And like, <laughs> this is our lives are in danger. And it was a weird, I remember shooting, the Thursday before we wrapped the entire thing, uh, the last scenes with America, um, <clears throat> RIP, and, uh, and got, we were constantly like trying to make sure that whatever it was we were shooting was gonna be a good enough ending if they ended up canceling or stopping production by, because we had no official word until we basically yeah. wrapped that episode. I just right. remember getting the call that, hey, we're shutting down production, come clean out your trailer. And so was, my boyfriend Zeke and I went went to set and started cleaning out the trailer. Like, you know, we got to get all this crap out. And um, I remember finding finding four rolls of toilet paper in my trailer. And I full on was just like, hey, guys, transport department, full disclosure, I'm going to take these home with me because I have no <laughs> toilet paper. Uh, and I'm going to look around in the store to see if they have more. Uh, and they did not because they were like, yeah, those got... Uh, uh, take it quite fast when the pandemic. Oh my gosh, out. that's so funny. I, I want to point out, I was the first to panic. I panicked you were. weeks before. Always, yes, everyone, oh, and I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, I told I told you all get toilet paper, get hand hand sanitizer, and stuff. Yeah. And that week was weird for me because I only filmed the Monday and the Friday, and I was kind of on Monday going. No one seems to care. And on Friday, it was like, don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> don't breathe over that. here. But it was surreal. Yeah. It's crazy because I think that also people maybe don't realize like we shoot. a se It takes us a while to shoot a season. So we started in like yeah. August of last year and we were going through to March. So it's a long period of time. It's like as long as almost as long as I guess a school year or something for kids. So it's it's also like. It's just wild to think about where we were in terms of the show, in terms of the world a year ago and where we are yeah. now. When we shot the beginning of the season, it was just like, you know, obviously none of this was was happening. And like, I remember like the thing I remember most, most at the top of the season is when we shot that scene where uh, Cheyenne and Mateo meet um, at the detention center. Oh yeah. Mateo's in the detention center. And that scene was so weird to film that day because the the ice raids in Mississippi had happened and they just rounded up like close to 700 people. Um, and we, and then we had to film that scene. And that was like the most sort of like crazy thing that was happening in the world and in, in the news. And now you look at where we at, it's like, oh my God, like they've added, the, the world has just added even more crap to what's happening. <laughs> yeah. It's like so ironic. We have this huge party planned for the season finale, which obviously, like, how is that <laughs> going to work? No, I'm not sure. I thought I sold 500 tickets. So, yeah, very curious. Yeah. How it'll work. That's mannequins. Great. We're going to be, there's going to be a yes. rush on mannequins in Hollywood. <laughs> 
We just got to get as many background mannequins as we can. And then a lot of like sweeping shots where it's like, don't focus in too hard on anybody. Wait, side note, that's the, that's a crossover I want. Superstore and the movie Mannequin. Oh, okay, come oh, on. Wow. That's a good crossover. That's a crossover event I would set a DVR yeah. for. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd watch it. Yeah, I'd watch that for sure. 100%. Okay, well, listen, this party is going to get a little bit bigger because we've got a couple more people to add to the conversation. Oh, no way. I know. Who knew? Please welcome to our, of course, illustrious SDCC 2020 Comic-Con panel, our lovely (laughs) showrunners, EPs of the show, Jonathan Green and Gabe Miller. Give them a welcome. Round of applause. Round of applause. All the writers say hi. We're coming from the Zoom writers room, which is so weird that we can just pop from there to here. (laughs) But um, yeah, we're good. So we've talked, I don't know if you guys have been watching. I don't think you have. You've been working, but we've been talking about a lot of things. We were talking about season five. Is there any sort of um, things you can talk about about the season five ending? I know that obviously the the fans obviously also know that we got cut off before we shot our last episode. But any, any favorite moments, highlights, things you can tell us about that behind the scenes? Yeah, uh, it was crazy. We were (laughs) down to the wire, uh, figuring out uh, whether, you know, we had some huge crowd scenes that we were planning to uh, shoot and then suddenly realized we couldn't get a crowd of people together and it was not very responsible to uh, (laughs) have a bunch of people together uh, to shoot this. And um, then it became clear it wasn't even going to be possible to shoot uh, anything for that final episode. Because- yeah, I was looking back at my emails from like that day and it was like that morning, like, don't forget to RSVP for the rap party. And then like, <laughs> should we be should we be pulling back on crowd scenes to like two, 250 to 150 yeah. to 100? And then it's like, rap party canceled. Early in the week, the biggest problem had been that it was supposed to rain. So we were like, oh, we can't do our crowd scenes. They were supposed to be outside. And it was like, oh, we're gonna have to cancel because of the rain. And then it's like, there's a much bigger problem than rain that we have to deal with now. Um, oh my gosh. It's raining viruses. Yeah. Now, I know that you guys have prepared a little something for this panel. You would come up with an idea, and I'd love for you to share what that's about, and 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 because I, I don't think the rest of the cast even knows about it. So, so lay it on us. We thought it might be fun to share some of the uh, trivia from the writer's room, it's mostly things that we've talked about that never saw the light of day, some for good reason, some... <laughs> We never even intended to. They were just sort of things we joked about in the room. Guys, I just want to give you a chance to back out of this right now, because what you're (laughs) essentially saying is all the things that failed that would have been, for whatever reason, embarrassing or wrong or or silly to put on television, you now want to tell a giant crowd uh, and have it recorded. (laughs) We we understand the risk, Ben, and we accept. Uh, (laughs) We're going to plow forward. Okay. Yeah, so one thing, speaking of Ben, uh, early on we had talked about why someone like Jonah would stay at the store. Was it, you know, was it just for Amy or was there something else? And at one point there was an idea that for the season one finale, we would be starting at Cloud9 Corporate and we wonder why we're there, what are we doing? And then we see Jonah walk in and reveal that he was a corporate spy infiltrating a Cloud9 store to report on unit activity. <laughs> yeah! Um, yeah. <laughs> He's a narc! <laughs> uh, so obviously that would have been a, a very different show, but um, yeah. yeah but it all would have taken a turn right there from that. Yeah. Episode. The running bit in the show that uh, fans would know about the, uh, the raccoons infesting the store was partially inspired, as the cast would know, by the actual raccoons that we have on our sound stages. From time to time, you'll be shooting a scene and you'll see up in the rafters, like a mama raccoon, like peeking over and um, <laughs> it's cute, but a little, you know, uh, it's taken care of, don't worry. I believe they, oh, really? They have not taken over or during this time that we've been down? I would assume that they oh, just multiplied oh, right over there. Oh, it's an entire city of raccoons there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're running out of time. So you guys have an, a couple more quick ones? There's a pitch that Glenn's favorite food is Dippin' Dots, the ice cream of the future, <laughs> but that the only place he knows how to get them is Six Flags. So every day before work, he goes to Six Flags, pays for a ticket, <laughs> Waits in line, buys Dippin' Dots, and then leaves. But for some reason, he doesn't buy a season pass. <laughs> can I just say, can I just say, man, I am so mad at Dippin' Dots. I don't know, like, look, I get it. Some people love Dippin' Dots. But when I go to, like, you know, uh, uh, you know, fairs or anything, and you see a sign that says ice cream, and you stand in line waiting to get up there to order ice cream, then you get up there, and it's Dippin' Dots. That's no. the ice cream. Col- Colton, as someone who loves Dippin' Dots, by the way, and it's their favorite ice cream, 
it's everyone is very clear on what they're in line for. It doesn't just blat like bl there's not. I'm just telling. I'm telling you, this is the experience I've had, man. This is my experience. <laughs> does it just say? This is the black experience, man. <laughs> <laughs> Now and you're gonna, it's you're our, it's our time to listen. <laughs> <laughs> time to listen. Uh, okay. <laughs> but seriously, no, Dippin' Dots, you're delicious, but please make sure that the, the signage outside, the signage. wherever you sell Dippin' Dots, is, is letting you aware that that's all that they're selling. If you take nothing else away from this panel. <laughs> yes, please, thank you. That be it. Thanks for giving me this platform. <laughs> all right, Jonathan, you got one more for us before we got to sign off? Two quick things about Sandra's wedding. One was that uh, we talked a lot about the stress that Sandra would feel from planning the wedding. And there was an idea that ended up becoming just a quick joke we mentioned in one episode, but we liked the idea that she would gradually over the course of the season go bald. And then by the time we got to the wedding, she would actually be bald at her own wedding. And then also... <laughs> <laughs> Sandra just can't catch a break. And then there was a pitch also that we loved. That, uh, we, you know, we're all Hamilton fans in the room, and so there was a pitch that um, Carol, the way that she would sabotage the wedding, would be by showing up at Sandra's wedding and singing "Satisfied" from Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> we, Why oh, didn't that time. happen? <laughs> at least we can't people. afford to pay those rights. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn Manuel lives in a gold castle. <laughs> I thought it would be a funny way to give you guys the musical episode you'd always be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I think it's very rare that that show creators and, and EPs and, and showrunners share about the things that didn't make it. So that was very fun. And I'm sure all of the viewers really appreciated that. So and on behalf of the cast, I just want to say it's really great to meet you guys. Yeah, However. nice to see you guys. Yeah, <laughs> great work. We love your work too. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching the Superstore 2020 SDCC panel. We just want to give a quick shout out. And if anyone else wants to chime in on this, thanking once again the essential workers. Obviously, our show portrays uh, a lot of essential workers who would you know, be, be called upon in a situation like we're living in the world right now. And we just want to say we are so grateful and thank you for all of your work, for going out there and, and helping the rest of us stay safe. So thank you so much. If anyone else wants to add anything, now's the time. Oh, Ben Feldman, he's got a little, he's got a hat there. Tell us about that hat. That's all. That was. I was just holding my Frontline Foods hat up. I was just adding to your sentiments. That's all. Beautiful. Lauren, thank you so much for uh, organizing and moderating. They gave me a schedule. I followed it. It was very easy, but it's always a pleasure and, and easy when it's with all of you wonderful people. Uh, yes, good to see you, you guys. Excellentified it. Words right out of my uh, mouth. <laughs> Bye, guys. All right. Bye, Bye, guys. Good everybody. to see you, everybody. Bye, see you Thanks soon. for watching. Bye. Bye. And, and this is the awkward part where we don't leave. Yeah. I'm going to leave. I'm leaving. No, oh, no, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you. No, you. Oh, it really is just me now. Thanks, guys.